What's happening everyone on YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. I'm still in the process of making an awesome aquascape for my Blue Dream and Black Rillies. Um, so, I'm going to make a Cholo Wood Bulbitis tree. Hmm. Alright, so let's just dive right on into it. I'm going to open this up. Now this is a rhizome plant, so we don't bury it in the substrate. That's why I'm going to attach it to cholo wood, and cholo wood is great for shrimp. They love it because it's loaded with holes, it's hollow, they can go inside and hide uh, amongst, you know, plants too, but, you know, still. I thought it would be cool to make a uh, rhizome bulbitis type of tree deal going on here so let me get my my handy dandy glue we gonna need some of that and then we're just gonna separate here now that's one thing I just you know ferns in general java fern bobitis microsorum it, it's all the same they, they're you, you know the rhizome plants and when you get them they're always I, I, I mean look at this crock a mess of roots the way that they do this you know because this is just they don't grow like this and then you know if they're not purchased right away they start to suffocate um you know and then that's why you'll find like dead leaves and whatnot in the center so i am spreading this out and yeah you want to take a good look in, in any any leaves that are dead or dying, you, you chop them off. Just just like every video I've ever explained. But let's let's see. How does that look? What are you thinking? Thinking that looks good? I think that looks cool. You know what? It only matters to me, and I think it looks awesome. Actually, you know what? This side has a it has a flat end, so I think it'll rest better like this. And then, if I can get, as always, snippy snip snip the roots. At this point, if you've been following me for a while, I shouldn't have to keep mentioning why you do this. Okay? Um... It just, it helps with the whole transition process. And actually, you know, this is like a really nice looking rhizome plant. You know, it's small, which is why I got it for, for this, um, cholo wood here. And, um, I'm just kind of spreading it out as much as I can. I want to kind of make, make it look like, you know, a cool looking bush. And if you can get some of the roots like in here if I can do this without glue that's that's preferable because um, it, it's not that the glue is harmful it's just for the first few weeks you can see it and when you put it on it's you know it'll be white and you just see this white spot on your piece of wood that takes you know a while to kinda dissipate so I think I got I got a good thing going right here with it like this yeah all right oh 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 my gosh I almost forgot before I start gluing this puppy thank you to all my new subscribers I really appreciate it all right so Let's find a good spot I can weasel some glue in here. And I have mentioned before that when you're working with this type of glue, you, you want to act you can activate it quicker by getting it wet. And I shouldn't need too much. You know, um, rhizome plants or roots are like uh, you know, like fingers, you know, eventually this is another reason why you want to trim them. They've already grown all long and all awkward and weird and haven't attached to anything yet. 
So you trim them down and that gives them a jump start to start anew and start gripping on to what it is you're attaching them to, essentially, uh, which can be anything, you know. Um, I've attached these uh, types of plants uh, to dragonstone, um, to granite, uh, driftwood, and in this case, cholo wood. I just, I, I think it's fun to say cholo. Cholo. Cholo what I mean? Pressing this down, I'm going to squirt some water, get that glue settled. I don't know why I'm blowing, it's not like blowing on it's going to do anything when I just said that it's water that does it. <clears throat> Man, I think that looks cool. What do you think? I don't know. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put it in the tank either way, but I think that looks pretty cool. And it's going to, the rhizomes, I stretch them out. They're going to keep growing across this. And, you know, since they like to hide in here, this is going to give it extra coverage, you know. So there's a plant growing across the top of the cholo wood. And um, here's another piece. How am I... Do I got enough on there? Is it necessary to... I'm not sure if it's... If I need that. I think... I mean, I'll use it for something else, but I I, I think we got a good, good thing going here, and I don't... You know, don't second guess yourself, you know, and you, you definitely don't want to go overboard, but hey... Let me show you how the uh, shrimp tank's coming along, though, since that will, that's what we're making this for. And yeah, I do make several videos in one day, so although you saw me acclimating these shrimp in a video a few days ago, that does not mean they've been sitting in this bag for three days. I just changed my shirt and make a video, but check it out. See, there's that Christmas tree moss. Uh tree that I made and um, up here let me get my tweezers so I can point this out better <sighs> alright so right here uh, this is uh, dwarf Sagittaria this is uh, green uh, green crypts back here Bronze Crips. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shrimp going, going bonkers. More green. Uh, more Sagittaria. Another Bronze Crip back there. And, um, you know, I made a video about this. About this tall stuff back here. And the... You know, sometimes this happens. You, you'll go buy a plant and... If it's not a big chain store, sometimes uh, your local fish store will order a bunch of plants and they just lose track of what it is that they bought. Um, but the guy that I go to, you know, he sells everything that's already converting to underwater growth, which really helps because when you go to like PetSmart and Petsco, everything's been grown, immersed or uh, or it was uh, cultivated in uh, tissue culture, which it was never grown underwater ever, you know. And if you can if you can nail those plants from PetSmart and Petco, uh, that's going to make yeah. I mean, you're an expert at that point because they grow nothing underwater. So when you buy plants that have been grown submerged, the whole transition process is a lot quicker. Although Crips being the exception. They're going to melt no matter what's going on, even if they've already com converted to underwater growth. Once you remove them and replant them, it just it, it's just the way of things. You uh, go ahead and YouTube uh, crip melt. You'll 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 won't find a single person who's going to be able to tell you 
how to stop it. Uh, some people just go ahead and snip off all the leaves because they know they're going to melt and, and disintegrate and fall off. Uh, I don't I don't mess with that. Um, I deal with a lot of live bear uh, fish and shrimp, and shrimp like to eat decay decaying rotten leaves anyway. You know, so I, I just I just let it do its thing. You know, so plants start melting. I, I I let them go through their deal, and if I have animals that will eat the dead dead leaves and shrubbage or whatever when they're rummaging through things, I just let them have at it. You know, so uh, I I do feed my shrimp though. Uh, they they like um, uh, algae wafers, which is just you know a, a kind of dehydrated plant product, uh, and then I also give them actual shrimp food. And what's really important, you, you do need to get shrimp food. You want to make sure it's loaded with um, protein and uh, calcium, uh, especially for the females when they're pregnant. Uh, right before they're ready to give birth, they will uh, molt. And if they have a failed molt, and I do have a video on failed molt, if they have a failed molt right when they're about to give birth, it's game over. You lost the mom, you lost all the babies. So it's extremely important. You'll notice when she's pregnant, she's going to go straight to the uh, shrimp pellets because she wants, excuse me, I promise I'm okay. She wants all that extra calcium. And also, when you do notice one that's molted, you don't need to remove their molt. That, that shell is loaded with calcium also, and the other shrimp will go and eat it. So you can leave that there. Now, you find a dead shrimp, yeah, you need to pull that out because it's going to create ammonia and, you know, um, that type of ammonia is not what you want. Ammonia from their waste is good because that feeds the plants, but an entire dead corpse in your plant in your tank, that's got to go. You know. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you for so much for watching and uh, my bulbitis cholo tree. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I'm gonna lay it flat like this. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, anyway, uh, when I do have these shrimp finally acclimated and the tank is completely done and all of that and they're, and they're kicking it and loving life, I'll just do an update and just make, you know, like a two-minute video just scanning across, you know, what we got going on in there. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. And if you've commented recently and I didn't shout out to anyone in this video, it's because I made five videos in one day. And so it's, it, you know, it's not like my videos were like made that second and then I posted them. So unless, you know, I did do a shout out, I probably did make that video that day. But some some videos have been sitting, sitting in my video playlist for a long, long time. And that's because I don't want to bombard all of my subscribers feed with nothing but posts from just me all day, every day. You know, so I got to stagger them out. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, and anyone new who has subscribed, uh, like I said before, leave a comment, leave a like, you know, say something. You can just say, hey, and I'll say, hello, right back at you. You know, don't be scared to ask something. That's what I'm here for. And there we go.